Hey guys, hope you all are doing very well out there. I'm Sam Kraken. Today, we're gonna go through my entire branded title fleet. I own more cars than I ever have, and they all have a flaw on the title. Whether it's like any of the cars behind me right now that have rebuilt titles because they were in accidents, and I fixed them, or whether it's like the lemon that I just purchased. I'm gonna go through each and every one. I'm gonna tell you what cars need to be on their way out, which ones might be on the way in, and also I'll tell you what needs to be finished on the ones that are still a work in progress. Like right here, the Audi RS7. The three cars behind me are just the first few in a group of cars that have steadily grown since the beginning of this channel. And I have each and every one of you to thank for that. Without your continued support and the help from sponsors, I wouldn't be able to do what I love so much, and that's build these cars and share them with you. Without further ado, let's get started on the cars that are coming to the channel. Underneath this car cover is what will be featured next on the channel. This will be the biggest project to date. It is the supercar rebuild project. Now, I cannot give you a ton of detail. I will show you. If you look down here on the ground, the car is actually elevated off the ground on a jack stand. I've already began working on this car, and I'll give you a hint. It's a six-speed manual car with a rear-mounted engine. Past that, you're gonna to have to figure it out until I unveil it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think is underneath this car cover. Can't wait to show you guys this car. It's gonna be totally epic. My best rebuild to date by far, and I totally stole it from the auction. It's an amazing, incredible deal. But once we get this, the supercar finish, once we get the Ford Focus RS finish, I have an idea, and I think it would be a great project, and I wanna hear your thoughts as well. I was recently taking a class on Skillshare.com about self-driving cars and their programming language. It was really intriguing. I started to think if I were able to grab a car from the salvage auction, some outside hardware, a little bit of help from a programming buddy of mine and probably some more of his friends, and build the world's cheapest self-driving car. I know it won't be easy, but I've already started to talk with, like I said, my friend, and I think that it's something that can be done. Now, I originally heard about Skillshare from Chris over at B is for Build, watching one of his videos. When I signed up, I was instantly hooked. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and subjects you're actually interested in. There's multiple classes that teach graphic design, photo editing, how to become an entrepreneur. There's classes that help you master YouTube and classes that can help you learn a new trade like windshield installation. Now, I reached out to Skillshare and I'm proud to say that they're sponsoring this video. And that's really big because education is a huge part of what I like to do with my audience. And I feel that learning directly from someone that's super passionate about the topic at hand is the best way to learn. If you check out my link in the description box below, and especially the younger group out there, I'd really like you to check this out. You're gonna get your two months of Skillshare absolutely free, but it's for the first 500 people only that sign up using the unique link down below. I gotta give a huge thanks to Skillshare for allowing me to extend that offer to you and sponsoring this video. Right now, we are in one of the next cars I'm going to tell you about, the 2011 Corvette Grand Sport, headed to the barn. This is one of the many barn cars. So let's get there, let's line them up, and go through all of them. Made it to the barn with the barn cars. First up is right here, the 2011 Corvette Grand Sport, the car I just got done driving. This is a prime example of the sort of car you want to find at a salvage auction. When I bought the car, it was completely totaled because a single dent in one of the front frame rails. Not a bent frame rail, not a kinked frame rail, a dent. And on a Corvette, there's no cost-effective way of replacing an entire frame rail. It's really just one major structure. So the car was totaled out. It was completely disassembled when I got a bumper. Fenders were off of it. A lot of the cooling system, the radiator, the fans, the condenser, all that was removed. And so I bought that stuff, reassembled it, repainted the front bumper because I had a little bit of paint cracking. And that is it. This car has an original 8,000 miles on it. And as it sits, I'm in it probably about 40 to 50% less than retail. The rear end of it is perfect with the exception of the cow manure that uh, I ran over in the pasture and that's all in the uh, mud flap here. But this car is a great driving car, a lot of fun, but it is a Corvette, a dime a dozen, and I will tell you the likelihood of this car being sold in the near future is very high. I like it a lot, 
but I just have too many new projects, too many new ideas, and they're gonna keep coming. So this one is likely on the chopping block. Before we get to everyone's favorite, the Audi RS7, we're gonna talk for a minute on the first car that I ever rebuilt, my 2015 Ford Fiesta ST. When I bought this car, it only had 8,000 miles on it, but it was in substantially worse condition than the Corvette Grand Sport. Honestly, I didn't know anything about rebuilding cars when I bought this car. For right around three grand, the entire front end was completely smashed to pieces. The frame rails completely bent. When I started calling body shops and asking what they could do for me, they were laughing, going, you should never ever rebuild this car. It's gonna be so much money, it's gonna be impossible. But here it is today. And when it was all said and done, I'm in it a little bit over 8,000 bucks. This is a car that I love driving. I like driving this car, dare I say it, more than the Corvette. It is so much fun. You can drive it at the limit all the time on public roads. It doesn't get you into too much trouble. And I just wonder what it would be like with a big turbo or a hybrid turbo. One of the only reasons I'm holding off from saying it's definitely going to sell. This one is a tough one. I've got a Ford Focus RS we're gonna talk about after the Audi RS7 that is in the process of being rebuilt right now. And so I feel like the logical thing to do would be to sell this car. But I know a Fiesta feels nothing like a Ford Focus RS. So this is a tough one. It wouldn't raise a ton of capital if I sold it. Maybe it's worth about nine, 10 grand as it sits. It's only got right under 15,000 miles on it right now. Everything as far as condition wise goes on is pretty good. The fitment of the front end is about what I would consider 98%. I've shown this car close up many times. So if you're a follower of the channel, you kind of know what you're dealing with with this guy here. But I love this car. I don't ever want to get rid of it. It's got sentimental value since it's the first car I ever rebuilt, but it is what it is. It's easily replaceable and it might also be on the chopping block. Now the car that everybody loves, the Audi RS7. The number one email I get on the Audi RS7, can I buy it when you're done? The answer is absolutely not. Not right now at least. I don't want to sell this car. I think this car is an amazing amount of fun. It's got these great looking HRE wheels on it, came from the auction like that. It also has an Army Tricks exhaust, which we installed on it. You guys might've seen the video on that. And the best part is that this car did not come stock. It's got a full stage two flash on it with a race fuel tune. It will make an excess of 800 horsepower. That's not a wheel figure, that's a crank figure. It's in the mid to low 700 wheel horsepower number. It is amazing. Here, let me take you inside really quick because it's just such a great all around car. Now mind the mess, this car is just about being finished in the inside. As you can see, it's got the quilted seat option. It has every single creature comfort you could imagine, all sorts of lane assist, steering assists. It's got the uh, heads up display. It has the carbon fiber trim. We put in red seat belts. And to think it only cost me right around the price, get this, of a new Toyota Camry is absolutely insane. That's why I love buying cars like this from a salvage auction. By far, probably one of the best purchases uh, with the exception of the supercar build. They're right about at the same, the discounts were huge. Now, out of the three main barn cars, only one of them still has a salvage title, and that is the Audi RS7. The Corvette and the Fiesta ST both have what are known as rebuilt titles. These are cars that were once salvaged and now deemed roadworthy here in the state of Florida, and so they've issued a rebuilt title for them. What's it gonna take to get the RS7 rebuilt? Well, very simple. This car is about 90% complete. Just needs a little bit of stuff. Really, I could probably take it in right now to rebuild inspection, get away with it since the front end has completely been repaired. However, the main place of repair in this car is actually in the interior where I need to install a few trim pieces. You can see all the wiring here for the trunk, all the electronics, the fuse boxes. I have the two major pieces that go here. There are a couple trim pieces in the interior that need to be reinstalled. Once that is finished, oh, up here, check this out. These pieces need to be put back. 
You got this hanging uh, trunk closer button. The only other thing that needs to be done on the RS7 is some underbody liners. They didn't include them, so I went to the dealership, purchased all of them, as well as the fender liners. When we get the car in the air, we'll throw all those pieces on. Really, there's only a couple more hours of work to be done to this car before it's completely finished. The Corvette, the RS7, and the Fiesta ST. Those are the three main barn cars. Behind me, though, is the car that really lives in the barn. It's the pizza car, a car that I just did a video update on, so I will not be spending really any time talking about it right now. If you wanna learn more about the pizza cars, don't know about them, you can check the link above. These are fun. I don't ever plan on getting rid of them. There's another one back there in the pasture somewhere. And that's them, they exist, the pizza cars. Now there is one car missing from this lineup. It was originally sitting right in front of the pizza car right there. And so it really is a barn car. It is my Ford Focus RS. Right now, my Ford Focus RS is at a body shop having the frame repairs done. Now this is a grueling process when you're rebuilding a car and paying out of pocket. Since it's not an insurance job, the body shop doesn't just go and order parts like they normally would through insurance. Since I am kind of dictating the process and having them do a few jobs so that I can complete the car myself and save a good bit of money because I am the labor. Well, everything is slow. So the frame repairs start. Then when they find out that there's a piece missing and there's always a piece missing on a front end collision car, there are so many pieces and parts in the front end of a car, especially plastics and modern cars that get shattered. Well, what ends up happening is you end up finding you're missing one piece that really helps align the front end. Then you're missing another piece and another piece. Right now, we've got it down to three missing pieces those are on their way to the body shop i've ordered them using my account again by ordering them myself it helps me save money and so hopefully i can say that car will be home in the next couple weeks the last car in the group is also my latest addition to the branded title fleet this one i know what you're thinking it's boring it's a lincoln suv who cares about this car but i care very much about this car because it taught me a lot this is a Lemon. It is literally a manufacturer buyback 2017 Lincoln MKC. I bought it with only 800 miles on the odometer. 800 miles for a lemon. This car is a high trim model. The only thing it really doesn't have is the uh, optional engine upgrade and all wheel drive. It has pretty much every single feature on it. It has all the cameras in the front, lane keep assist, all the safety stuff. This thing is an amazing car retails for like 45 46 thousand and i paid half that because it was bought back by the manufacturer at only 800 miles in my opinion this car didn't have enough time to be deemed a lemon but some states like the state of california where this car came from are a little bit more liberal than others when it comes to these laws and well they allowed a buyback at 800 miles this is the real utility car drive this on long trips drive this around town, throw everything in it. I love this thing. This car will fundamentally change the way that I shop at car dealerships from now on. I did a whole entire video on buying this car. You can check it out right here. And this dealership that I bought the car from, it was a Ford branded dealership. They had dozens, if not over a hundred lemon vehicles in stock. A lot of them with mileage under 10,000 and a lot of them being like a year old. This would be the only way I'd buy a new car. Of course, after check, checking the history, checking all the information. And by law, these dealerships not only provide you extra warranty on these cars, they also provide you all the histories as to why it was bought back. This car specifically was bought back because, well, the previous owner said that it shut off on them. And this car shuts off on me too. It's because it has auto start stop, a feature coming on pretty much every single modern car. And if you did watch the video that I did on this car, I hypothesized that maybe the person that bought this car wasn't used to that. They went and they brought it back because they thought the car was shutting off on them. There was no way to fix that because nothing's broken. And then it was bought back. Now, I also had a debate with the Lemon Law attorney who insists there is no such thing as a lemon car that is not really a lemon or manufacturers don't buy back cars just because people complain. But I put about 2,000 miles on this car since I purchased it. I've not had a single issue. What a deal to be had on a basically brand new car, extended warranty. It doesn't get any better than this, at least in my opinion. And that's until I go and buy the next lemon and it really was a lemon. So there it is, that is the garage update. Well, it's really not a garage, it is the barn car update. Now, how many were there? There's three behind me, two in the distance, supercar, 
uh, Lincoln and Focus. So that is eight total cars, all with bad titles, or at least what we've been told is a bad title. These cars all are great. I enjoy each and every single one of them, and I encourage you guys to find something that's been deemed a reject. Bring it back to life if it hasn't already, and enjoy it because like the old saying goes, you drive the car, you don't drive the title. Now, for those of you who are stopping in for your first time, I appreciate you checking this out. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel. If you're not already following me on Instagram, I snapped a lot of photos while I was lining these cars up. I posted some of them on there, made some stories. So follow me right here at Sam, C-R-A-C-C, -C, Sam Prack. So guys, don't let anybody tell you that these cars can't be brought back right because they're likely wrong. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you very soon.